Golden sunshine beams through your window as you flutter your eyes open. The vines from your plants create shadows on the walls and on the art pieces you've hung up. There are oil paints and pastels strewn across your work desk and a painting drying on the easel. You get up and grab your favorite broken in thrifted jeans that you customize with embroidery and painted pockets. Throwing on your favorite graphic tee you got from a museum and grabbing your daily tote bag to head out to meet up with your friends for an outdoor picnic and painting session. You find solace in your creative pursuits and freedom in releasing your ideas onto canvas. You feel supported by your art community. You see rebellion in art and relish in its power. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dion and today we're going to talk about an aesthetic that was actually popular maybe like four years ago, five years ago, which is the art ho aesthetic, the art girl aesthetic. And this is an aesthetic that's been on my list just because like I remember when it was popular, obviously because it wasn't that long ago, and really enjoying it like, and liking the elements of it and wanted to try it out. Also, it's an, it's an aesthetic that was created by uh, and for queer POC people. So I thought for Black History Month, great time to cover it. So if you like niche aesthetics and fashion commentary in general, then definitely subscribe to this channel because I post videos every Thursday. And with that, let's get into it. This is my like attempt on art hoeing it up. Honestly, I just didn't want to wear this plain turtleneck because sometimes that can look a little bit weird on camera here this this is my theory behind my art ho outfit i crocheted these granny squares as you can see because they're not very good and made a little bandana what's more and they're yellow an art ho element got turtleneck in pretty decent art ho colors and i made this t-shirt custom for me my boyfriend and my best friend after we saw the movie the iron claw which is an a24 film aka an indie film also if you haven't seen this film you need to see this film this is required the iron claw is actually required i know this is black history month and I'm, but i'm going to talk about a movie about white men really quick required viewing the iron claw can i repeat required viewing and i made this t-shirt on canva so two of my creative pursuits love it all right <laughs> what is the art ho aesthetic the movement started at the beginning of 2015 and it comprised of a few tumblr users one of the co-founders is Mars, a 16-year-old gender-fluid POC Tumblr user. Mars and their co-founders started drawing on their selfies. Characteristics belonging to this movement include creatively edited, drawn-on selfies, bright colors, and black style expression. These features relate to the issues of creativity, power, standing out, and taking control over how POC are viewed by others. Crucially, they all serve the ultimate goal of claiming space for POC artistic expression. The name of the movement got taken over, out of its original context, and away from people of color, the minority group that started the cultural movement. This cultural appropriation only emphasizes the need for the art ho movement in the first place, because this new aesthetic carrying the name art ho overrules POC and art again. So it's a an aesthetic about kind of like the rebellion of art and creating space for yourself and forcing space for yourself in spaces that are predominantly very rich, very white, and like on the gender binary. So obviously an aesthetic like this is always gonna be close to my heart and something that like I support and that's something that I hope my channel also supports. Also, I wanna put a disclaimer that I feel like I should put in all my videos, but sometimes the TikToks or the images that I use aren't necessarily directly in the aesthetic, but they're adjacent and they have similar elements. So if you're like, um, actually that one was like a boho aesthetic technically, not an art ho aesthetic, shut up. Shh. We're just, okay. Shh, shh. So I wanted that to be sort of the intro because even though we're talking about the fashion elements, I want to talk about like the art ho movement versus the art ho like aesthetic that got taken over because yes, it always had like fashion and artistic slash social media elements to it because it started on Tumblr and obviously like that translates to Pinterest and stuff, you know, maybe like a generalized look to it, but how it got sort of aesthetized and appropriated and all that. So 
that's what we're working with. In terms of like the fashion and the actual like aesthetic in terms of clothing, the breakdowns are mustard yellow, deep blue, hunter green, and lots of primary colors. Like I think very kind of kid core energy. Hair and makeup really celebrates like natural curls, locks, hair in a bandana or a wrap, micro bangs, messy buns. Sometimes there's like artsy fun makeup. Sometimes it's like very natural, like blush freckles kind of vibe. Obviously that's just up to user's discretion. Likes of the art ho, obviously like art, museums, creative outlets, anything that can express their creativity. The essentials in terms of the fashion aesthetic, the fashion part are anything associated with art culture or things printed with artists work on them. Mom jeans, graphic tees, overalls slash painted overalls, shirts with thin horizontal stripes, striped meadow shirts, any mustard yellow clothing, Shoes are Converse sneakers of any color, van, Vans, old schools, checkered slip-ons, classics, Doc Martens or Mary Janes. Favorite accessories are art socks, the kinkin bags, art supplies, round glasses. I associate tote bags. I feel like if you're truly artsy, then you're gonna carry around sketchbooks or supplies or stuff in your tote. So some criticisms of this aesthetic is that it got aesthetified when it was really like a movement and empowerment of art and artistic expression for black queer people and so it's like this video i'm trying to be very delicate because yes it is a fashion aesthetic but i also want to be very clear on the fact that it was a movement first and a, a community first it started as the art ho collective um, as a way to support each other so this is gonna be a, a quote from an article in The Guardian with Mars, who is the person that started the art home movement and kind of got kicked out of the art home movement by other people in the collective. Um, I have sort of clips from a YouTuber who did like an entire video on this and a TikTok on it as well. So I'll insert those here. About how the movement was basically black queer youth based and they would Photoshop themselves into white museum spaces. So basically Mars met these other people that were also on our Art Ho Collective. And in their paper interview, Mars wasn't even featured in this like at all when they were the creator. So it says in their post that during the time of Art Ho, other members were repeatedly excluded. Mars from group achievements, despite even starting the group, the LOC was never in my name. It's in at Frida Cash Flow's name. I was told I was too young and not competent enough to have a legal control over an entity that was born from my lived experience. While creating Art Ho, I was in high school, moving from home to home and doing. The adults in our home were aware of this and didn't care about helping me improve my situation, only redistributing funds once when I was in a crisis and again to encourage me not to speak up. When Paper did a group photo of the collective and I didn't have the funds to participate, no one batted an eye. All right, so my mic turned off uh, the last half of my video, which is great. So from the Guardian interview with Mars, the founder of ArtHo, they said, quote, ArtHo is a term used by me and my co-founder Jam to empower and uplift participants of color in this movement. Ho is A-A-V-E and is normally a derogatory way to refer to women, especially black women, as being promiscuous within the male gaze. Using the term in an arbitrary way diminishes its harmful origin in light of something better. And when asked about the aesthetification of the art ho movement, they said, quote, it was getting co-opted by this little group of skinny, frail white girls. To belong in their group, you had to have a $100 backpack, a $20 Japanese sketchbook, shit like that. When that came to my attention, we started to fight back and identify as a movement. It seemed really classist that you had to have this certain level of wealth. Jam and I are broke. It hurt me because I don't have income like that. I can't go and buy an expensive DSLR. My mom bought me a camera for $70 on Amazon and that was a lot for us. People tried to use the angry black person stereotype when I called them out on it, telling me it wasn't a big deal, but it felt like a big deal. People of color are often denied artistic ability or things we birth into the world are stolen by white counterparts. I never intended 
art ho to be that way. So that's honestly almost a criticism on me in this video and just like the aesthetification again on the art ho movement. And I know that we are gonna get into like talking about the fashion aspect of it, but almost in the same way that if I were to do like hippie fashion or beatnik fashion or goth fashion, those fashion elements have movements behind them and principles uh, behind them. And I wanna be like really respectful towards that. We're just gonna ignore the lighting. So before we get into getting the look, I think to be a true art hoe, you have to A, like be a patron and a lover of the arts, whether that's supporting your artist friends, whether that's going to your local museums, whether that's purchasing art on Etsy or directly from local artists rather than just from like Target or Marshalls. But I also think to be an art ho, you really have to uplift like marginalized voices, especially queer POC voices, which is what this movement was intentionally for. It's about intentionally taking up space. And so if you have queer POC artists in your life, supporting their art, supporting their creative pursuits, uplifting their art and their voices is is the true way to be an art ho. So I don't, we're gonna talk about the looks of an art ho, but you gotta be an art ho in here and in here and out there before you like just dress with Van Gogh socks because I don't wanna contribute to this like one dimensional narrative of what the art ho is. I do want to talk about its fashion elements and encourage people to become more active in the movement and the principles behind those fashion elements and the aesthetic elements. Art hoes, let's get into it. How to get the look. I think the color palette of like primary colors ob and obviously like bright dandelion yellow um, is important, always, always a good sign. Having stripes is always a good indicator, lots of stripes in the art home movement. Anything painted or printed with art is always a good idea. Um, High-waisted mom style pants like jeans or cords or checkered pants. Overalls are also very popular. So that's a good kind of like bottom to get some sort of that shape of trouser or overall and then grab any bright color top or sweater or t-shirt or whatever, or something that's art printed, something that you customized um, and add that in as well. And then you can always layer bright turtlenecks underneath the t-shirts or cardigans. <laughs> Having fun socks and sneakers are always a good idea. I mean, all my artist friends would paint and embroider and draw on their sneakers. That's like such a classic. The Kangen backpack is sort of like the consumeristic part of it, but I honestly, I stand by my tote bag comment. I think a tote bag is more realistic for true artists because they need all their things. Besides the activism, I also feel like this movement is about customization and personalization and expressing yourself. Reminds me a lot of what we talked about last week, talking about That's So Raven, the show. Stylists that worked on That's So Raven said that even when they bought or rented or got things, uh, for the show, that they would always customize it, paint something on it, add a pin, add a flair to it, because that was true to Raven's character. And I think that Art Ho is very similar. Like what's true to the character of this movement is about personalization and customization. And that's not something you can buy. That's not something that you can just like get from Urban Outfitters or free people. It doesn't evoke the same feeling that a really rad like 80s windbreaker you found at a thrift store for ten dollars gives or pants and jeans that you that you customize and painted and put your own heart and soul into it i think that is like an important aspect to your outfit is to always have something customized and adding your own spin on it like never just wearing your clothes always styling them none of your clothes look like they did it from the store even once you got them or once you bought them you added your own thing to it whether it's pins or whatever love it i love this move i love this movement i love the principle behind it and i do genuinely like the fashion and the pure aesthetics of it as well so i'm gonna link that youtube video that i mentioned as well as mars's instagram account uh, if you want to learn more about the art home movement and everything and i hope you like this video if you did please give it a thumbs up uh, and as always leave a comment down below what else you'd like to see from me follow me on tiktok and instagram at dion the Taurus, and i will see you guys next week bye